Well, most probably Texas A&M fans are a little annoyed this morning that they are fighting for their lives now in the SEC. But I bring up a better question. If there was to be an only all Texas rankings, where would the Aggies fall in that category? Number one, number two, number five, number eight. Honestly, where would they fall? Well, starting now every Thursday from the rest of the season, welcome into Lock on Aggies, where we'll be doing Texas Thursday, breaking down every single team in the Lone Star State. You are Locked On Aggies, your daily podcast on the Texas A&M Aggies, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Howdy, everybody, and welcome back into another episode of Locked On Aggies presented by the Locked On Podcast Network. And thank you so much for making us your first listen every single day. You can check us out on iTunes, Spotify, and of course, now YouTube. Yep, that's live right here on YouTube.com daily. I am your host, Cole Thompson, and I love public feedback. Give me a follow on social media. Name right down there below for all of you watching. Anything you can do to make this a more quality sounding podcast, Monday through Friday, give me a follow, give me a shout out, and I will add it into the mix. Secondly, Locked On Aggies. Locked on Aggies is your number one podcast for all things Texas A&M content found here right on LLP. You can subscribe on iTunes, listen on Spotify, watch us on YouTube, or follow us every single day at LockedOnPodcast.com. So, I already mentioned, we're going to talk about this today. Where does Texas A&M fall inside of the Texas rankings? There's 12 major teams in the state of Texas. I'm going to rank them every single week. This is a Texas Thursday thing. This is going to become a tradition just like on Mondays and just like on Tuesdays, we break down film, we break down audio, we break down what was said at press conferences. This is now a staple of the show. You can catch it every single Thursday. Guess what? Texas A&M, they don't come in at one this week. I'm sorry. I just can't do it. I can't put them at one justifiably yet. But do they come in at number two, number three, number four, or number five? That you're going to want to listen to. But before we begin on that, Everybody right now is worried about the bowl projections. Where does Texas A&M go now with their bowl projections? Because it feels like they're out of the college football playoff conversation until a lot of drastic things happen. Because of think about it. Ole Miss can win this weekend and derail Alabama. Then A&M could beat Alabama, knocking them out of the college football playoff conversation and knocking A&M back into the college football conversation. But that means Ole Miss is in the college football conversation. And then you have to beat Ole Miss. And after you beat Ole Miss, you have to help Ole Miss lose another game. And on top of that, then you have to go toe-to-toe with Georgia offensively to be able to get into that conversation. Not only that, you also have to hope that Arkansas loses two big games and one being to a very bad opponent, like a South Carolina, like a Mississippi State, like a Missouri. You have to make sure they lose that game on top of losing this weekend to Georgia to have two losses, and AM can't lose another game. So a lot of moving parts there. But a New Year's Six Bowl game still feels pretty reasonable, I would say. I don't think it's too far-fetched to say a New Year's Six Bowl game is out of the question just yet. So who would be in those New Year's Six Bowl games? Well, according to usatoday.com, here are the updated projections. I'm going to go through the SEC first, uh, just going through and talking about who goes where in the New Year's Six games because there are four teams. Actually, I think it's five teams. Uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five teams represented in the New Year's Six Bowl games, including two in the college football playoff. Now, so to start there, uh, Alabama is still in. They're going to face Penn State in the Orange Bowl as the number one and number four seed, respectively. And then the number two and the number three seed, I believe that game, if I'm not mistaken, is in the um, – what is it in uh, this year? Is it the – I think it's the Fiesta Bowl. I, I, I'm like 99.999999% sure it's the Fiesta Bowl. Uh, no, it's the Cotton Bowl. Wow, okay, it's the Cotton Bowl this year. Okay, so it's the Cotton Bowl. Uh, so that means it's Oregon versus Georgia in the Cotton Bowl in Arlington, Texas. So that would mean that the other three games are up for grabs. And those games are right now for Florida, they go to the Sugar Bowl. They would face off against Oklahoma. Oklahoma, not in the, not in the bowl game, but they do win the Big 12. So here's the analogy with it. Usually the next best team from the SEC gets in the Cotton Bowl. That's usually how it goes. And the winner of the Big 12 gets in the uh, gets in the Cotton Bowl. But that's not the case this year because of, um, oh my God, the SEC gets the uh, Sugar Bowl. So 
That's not the case this year because of the Cotton Bowl is going to be used for the college football playoff. So the Sugar Bowl now features Oklahoma and Florida. Not a bad matchup. But again, this is also a matchup that we saw last year. And with all the opt-outs, Florida got their Keister's tail whip. So there we go. Now, after that, you have the Peach Bowl. The Peach Bowl is two at-large bids. There's two teams at-large. I agree with one. I 100% disagree with the other. Uh, the first one being Ole Miss. Ole Miss right now is averaging over 600 yards of offense. They are scoring over 56 points a game. They have, in my opinion, the Heisman front runner in Matt Corral. And they're very consistent offensively across the board. And when you look at the voting, and this is like the biggest thing I think people need to understand. When you look at the voting across the board, it always is offense. Nobody cares how good you are defensively. Like nobody, nobody gives a flying fadoodle if you can do anything defensively. They only care about offense. So with that in mind, Ole Miss probably gets the bid over a lot of other teams that are fighting like an AM. Who they play is interesting, though, because if I do not agree that this should be the team, I think that another team should be in, and it's North Carolina State. They have the Wolfpack going down to Atlanta to face off against the Rebels. No, it, to me, no, it doesn't work. Because if you got to remember, they lost to an old Mississippi State team, and they, they lost pretty handily to a Mississippi State team. Wake Forest from the ACC, if we're going to do this, is a much better matchup. And the reason it's a much better matchup is because they're undefeated and they've beaten everybody consistently offensively. So it's two offensive battles that you really, really, really want to see. Now, there's one more bowl game, and it is the Fiesta Bowl, another at-large win. This is Arkansas, and it's Texas. Arkansas versus Texas meeting up out west to face off against each other for the likes of I think it's the PlayStation Trophy still. I want to say it's still the PlayStation Bowl. Anybody want to tell me if I'm wrong on that? Don't really know. Uh, but anyways, yeah, this is a rematch. This is exactly what I think a lot of people want to see. Imagine if Casey Thompson starts the entire game against Arkansas. I don't think the score is by 19. I don't think they win by 19. I think they maybe win by 7. I think maybe they win by uh, 10, maybe even 13. But they don't win by 19. Like, it, it doesn't happen with Casey Thompson. There was a huge feel and momentum in the fourth quarter that swung Texas's way that I do believe Texas would have actually been competitive in this game. I don't think they would have won. I think 100% Arkansas still would have won this game. But they would have been competitive. I don't see right now where Arkansas loses more than two games. And the two games I think that they lose is some random matchup, whether it be like to an Auburn or to an Alabama, and then they lose to Georgia. If you lose to those two teams, you're going to be still considered for a New Year's Six Bowl game. Like you are. It just is the way. And more so when you look at college football right now, I do understand why people are saying, oh, well, why would it be that way? Well, because in college football right now, everybody is dropping like flies. You're seeing a brand new top 10 every single week. You're seeing teams that probably should not be in the top 10 be in the top 10 because if they won a game by an inch instead of a mile. So those are going to be some things under consideration. Now, where does Texas A&M go? They're probably in the best bowl game outside of the New Year's Six Bowl games because they're playing a really good contender. And it's Clemson. Now, it's a rematch from two years ago and three years ago, you know, back in College Station where they almost went down to the wire and beat Clemson in overtime. That would have been the biggest win of Jimbo Fisher's career, I would say, at Texas A&M, more so than beating Florida. And then, of course, they went to Clemson two years ago, and they faced off against the Tigers, and they got steamrolled in the second half. So it'd be a little bit of a redemption story. Uh, you now have Clemson, who is hot garbage offensively, still very good defensively, Low scoring game, in my opinion. The way that AM's offense is playing, uh, with how good their defense is and how good Clemson's defense is, I could just be in a 17 10 game. I mean, I could see this being a 10 13, I mean, a 13 10 game. It could easily be one of those scores because this is, offense is not that great for either team. Defensively, you would be able to see a ton of plays being made. Uh, DJ Uwe and Galale would probably have a lot of struggles against the secondary. And I do think that if Zach Calzada is still the starter, yeah, that's another thing. It's just a big, big problem for this team. So, I mean, the Gator Bowl, you know, if you get a good matchup outside the New Year's Six Bowl games, like a Michigan, like an Ohio State, like a uh, – like a, if, if Wisconsin was good, I would actually put them in there. Uh, like a um, – like a – yeah, sure, why not? Let's just throw in um, an Iowa State maybe, maybe in Iowa or something like that. It's a good matchup. I Like, I have no problems. I have no qualms if that's the matchup. But if it's not, therein lies the problem. So that's, I think, the biggest thing you got to take away. Speaking of taking things away, let me tell you about a product that I really love using. Every single morning after doing my radio show on Sports Map Radio Network, just saying it from 5 a.m. to 7 a.m., I like to go work out. I like to go start my day off with a nice workout, get my body right, get my mind right for the day because, again, it's very long and I got to go do stuff afterwards for Sports Illustrated, for writing, for all that stuff. 
But I come home, I shower, and when it's really hot in Texas, I sweat like crazy. I absolutely sweat like crazy. And I don't know how to get rid of it because of it's not just me. It's just daily heat. I found a product and it 100% works. It's called Sweat Block. It's the number one antiperspirant wipe out in America today. All you do is take a shower the night before, install it on your body, take it off, sleep, and the next day for the next 48 hours, four, eight, that's right, two full days, you will have no sweat, no pit stains, nothing. You will be perfectly fine. I have done this. I works. I've done this multiple times. I go sit in the sun at Texans practice. Guess what? It is a breeze. I feel great. I feel relaxed and I don't have to worry about sweat stains. Go visit sweatblock.com or visit amazon.com and use the promo code locked on to receive a 20% welcome bonus with your very first purchase. That's 20% off at sweatblock.com or amazon. Number one product right now on amazon. We know what amazon does. Use that promo code for 20% off your very first purchase. Stop the sweat today with Sweatblock. Locked on Aggies presented by the Locked on Podcast Network. Thanks again for making us your first listen every single day. Now let's go ahead and dive into these Texas rankings. I'm not saying that Texas A&M is going to lose to every team. Like I'm not. I'm not going to do that. Like that'd be stupid of me. So I'm going to go ahead and just tell you right now. Texas A&M is not inside the bottom half. They're not. So they would immediately beat up on Texas State. They would immediately beat up on North Texas. They would immediately beat up on Rice. They would beat up on UTEP. They would beat up on, I would say, Houston. And I do think that Houston is close to getting there. They're very close to being one of those high-level teams, but they're also not. They, they barely beat Navy last week, and they struggled against Texas Tech, who just got blown out by Texas. So can't put them any higher than that. And then afterwards, I put Texas Tech. They come in at number seven. The six ahead is where the question lies. When I look at these six teams, you got to go ahead and have a little bit of question and concern. So for me, number six this week is TCU. TCU for me comes in at number six in the state of Texas because they played bad. I I mean, there's no other way to put it. It's not that they didn't have a good day, but you wouldn't think that that's how they lost the game. When I look at TCU, I figured when they played SMU, they would be able to get torched through the air. Tanner Mordecai, the hottest quarterback in the state of Texas right now, arguably one of the hottest names at the position, was able to throw for only 245 yards and three touch, uh, four touchdowns against this team. And you say four touchdowns is a lot. Yes, but he also threw three interceptions in this game. So for almost every pass that, was a, that went to the end zone, another one went as a turnover. So you got to take that into consideration. They lost by the ground. They lost by the run game. They allowed 350 yards. They allowed five players to average over 4.6 yards per carry. Uh, My bad, 6.1 yards yards per carry. And they also allowed 15 plays of 10 plus yards or more on the ground. So 15 plays of 10 plus more yards is showing that your defensive line is atrocious right now. Your defensive line cannot stop anybody. And Max Duggan didn't have the best day passing, but he did enough to keep this team in consideration. But 350 yards. That's the second most in the Gary Patterson era. 595 total yards of, de- of defense allowed. That's bad. Like, like it's just it's straight up bad. And I thought TCU was actually going to be a legitimate contender for the Big 12 this year. They're lucky if they finish in the third place spot. They're lucky if they finish in the fourth place spot. I would say fifth place through seventh place is probably where they end up, but they're lucky. Like, I mean, very lucky things went their way. Things swung the momentum their way if they finish in the number five, four three or four spot right now in the country. I mean, the big 12, my bad. Number five for me, I almost want to go a different direction. I really did. I was like this close to going in a different direction. I would say number five for me right now is UTSA. Yeah, UTSA, because here's why. And I don't know if A&M would lose this game to UTSA because I, 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 I definitely don't think they would. I definitely do not think they would. But since Sir McCormick, their star running back, who honestly would be the dope walker favorite would be a Heisman front runner and would be a first round pick easily if he played at a non power five school. If he played for TCU, played for Texas, played for AM, played for, I don't know, let's throw another one out there, Baylor, he would be in the Heisman conversation, hands down. I don't know if the offense would be the same that what Jeff Trailer's doing, but the Roadrunners are four and out. This is the second time in program history, and this is the first time in FBS history that they are four and out. They have been perfect in the second half. 
Sincere McCormick, again, he had 40, uh, he had 42 carries, 184 yards, three touchdowns. They outgained Memphis, which, by the way, is an AAC school and part of the number six conference. They outgained them 399 to 230 after the first quarter. 399 to 230 after the first quarter. Very, very good game defensively. Uh, the Roadrunners played a very strong second half. They put a lot of pressure on um, uh, Gunnar Keel, the quarterback for uh, for uh, Memphis. They have a shot to finish off really strong. It's very clear that they can win their next three games against UNLV, Kentucky, and Rice to go 7-0 and to start the year. And that would put them as bowl eligible. Would love to see that. I think it would be great for the state of Texas. Uh, afterwards, they have a big game against Louisiana Tech. They have to face off against uh, UTEP. And more than likely, they'd be facing off against the front runner for the UAB, uh, UAB for the Conference USA Championship. You got to like what what, men, uh, what UTSA is doing. They are a very, very up and good, up and coming good team. But at the same time, they're not going to lose to AM. They're not going to beat AM. They, they 100% are not going to beat AM. So, number four, this is where it gets really challenging for me. The only reason I put this team at number four is because that they're in a group of five conference and also. They haven't beaten anybody of major standard just yet, and that's SMU. SMU, I get it. You play TCU. TCU may be on a down year, so I don't believe in TCU just yet, so I can't put you any higher. Tanner Mordecai is an elite player. I mean, like, like, like let's be real. The fact that he was held off from uh, Spencer Rattler either shows that Spencer Rattler is truly just having a down year because of bad offensive line play found at Oklahoma, or... He just was really good, and they didn't know how to utilize him in this offense, so that could be a whole other story. But they have a really good start. They've had a really good uh, start to the year. They're 4-0. Get that win over TCU. That's a major win over a Power 5 school. I like this team a lot. I think that they're going to be really, really fun. Uh, they're, uh, they went 8-0 in 2019, I believe it was. Uh, they started off 5-0 last season, I believe it was, and they're 4-0 this year. So they've started really strong, but... The reason I don't put them at number three, two, or one is because they need a Hail Mary to beat up on the likes of Louisiana Tech. If you're going to play Louisiana Tech, I get Louisiana Tech is a better team than most people give credit for, but if you're going to take a Hail Mary shot to beat up on Louisiana Tech, it, it, it just doesn't do it for me. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I know that some people are going to go, well, that's not fair. Well, you know what? It's not fair. But again, these are my rankings. I still believe that what Sonny Dykes and this staff have done can put them in the conversation to be alongside the likes of the UCFs and the Houstons and the Cincinnati's and maybe even find a way to upset Cincinnati, get into that college football playoff conversation. And then when they don't get in, because if they won't, it just won't happen. SMU will not get in that, that way. They could get into a New Year's Six Bowl game. They could be that group of five school that gets in, that face off against like an Ole Miss, to face off against like an Oklahoma, maybe a um, an Iowa team, something, on, uh, something along the lines of that. You could see that happen. I absolutely could see that happen. They have to beat Cincinnati, though. Like, that is the key. You got to beat Cincinnati. If you can't do that, it doesn't really matter. You'll probably go to, like, the, I don't know, the, the Las Vegas Bowl. I mean, like, that's that's the reality of this. Because, of again, we, we treat the group of five schools like a joke. Nine times out of ten. We do. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I would say T uh, SMU is right on the cusp of the number three spot. They could even be there after next week. This episode of Lockout Aggies is brought to you by betonline.ag. Guess what? BetOnline.ag gives you the best buy the best bets, and the best lines every single day. When you go visit their site, they have everything from UFC to MLB to postseason baseball to the NBA starting up, college football, NFL, and much, much more. Simply use the promo code NFL100 and you could sign up today and receive a 100% welcome bonus. That means whatever you win, whatever money you get that day, you could double by the time you're walking out if you win your day. That's double money just for signing up. Literally, just for signing up and use the promo code NFL100. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. So stop sitting on the sidelines and get into the action now with betonline.ag. Your online sportsbooks experts. You know what I hate? Spending money on things that I don't need. And the biggest place I do that is going to an auto shop store. Listen, every single year, we know that we have to go ahead and get our oil changed. And the only reason we usually don't do it is because of we cannot get below our cars to go ahead and change the oil. But we can do a lot of other things. But instead, we have to pay all the service fees because if we don't know where to shop. Now you do. It's called rockauto.com. RockAuto.com is an online auto parts service system that has been serving customers for the past 20 years. They have everything from engine modules to tail lamps to brake pads. So whether you're just trying to fix up your daily driver or refurbish a cult classic, Rock Auto has the parts for you. 
go ahead and visit rockauto.com and use promo code locked on to write in where you hear of us so they know that we set you. It's amazing selections, reliably low prices, and all the auto parts you will ever need. Rockauto.com is the place to be. Locked on Aggies presented by the Locked on Podcast Network. Betting on college football does not have to be a guessing game. All you got to do is listen to the new Locked on Bets podcast presented by your boy Q and handicapping expert Lee Sterling. Get daily picks, wages, odds, Lee's locks of the day, and much, much more when you listen to the new Locked on Bets podcast presented by betonline.he. And of course, sponsored by Odyssey, Spotify, iTunes, wherever you get your podcast listening systems. Number three, all right, this is where I'm going to get a lot of slack. This is where I'm going to get a lot of slack right now. Uh, it is going to be Texas A&M. I'm sorry, it is. Offensively, you are not good. And I, I don't know if this makes me sound like a terrible person or a homer, uh, but you're not good offensively. And that's the, that's the key to this whole conversation. Every single day that we do rankings, A&M has to be good offensively. You cannot lose games by having poor offense. That was what you saw. That was it. Like that was what that was what you saw in, in Arlington. It was a poor offensive showing. Zach Calzada, I get it. He does not have the best protection. You're playing up to four offensive linemen who are first year starters. You're playing up to four offensive linemen who are first year players, meaning they're freshmen. Two are true freshmen. Two have at least been in the system to learn, but they haven't really gotten enough snaps. I understand that. I don't care, and I don't think anybody should care. You can't care. You have to be better offensively. You have too much veteran talent at the wide receiver position and at the running back position to be this horrendous offensively. And if Zach Calzada, and, and again, I, I say this as nicely as possible. If Zach Calzada keeps holding on to the ball for too long, because there were four times I counted against Ar- in Arlington, four, where he went through first read, second read, third read, second read, third read, second, and just kind of threw it to get rid of the ball. You can't do that. First, second, third, first, boom, got it. You have to let that ball go. And if all your reads are broken, throw it away. Throw it away. Because if you just holding on the ball, not only is eating away at the clock, it's also allowing other teams to be able to watch you and see what happens when you're under pressure. Again, Haynes King, if he is on this list, a and probably number one. a and maybe still loses that game, but they are a better team. Unfortunately, that's not the case. Yes. You look at how bad the secondary played last week against Arkansas. Here's the reality of it. They still rank fourth nationally in pass coverage. You look at how the run defense plays. Yeah, they're still 12th in the SEC, but in total, AM right now still is a top 20 defense in the in, in the college football realm. They're number three, I believe, now in the SEC, and they're number like 19 or 18 in total defense in college football. They dropped off a little bit. I mean, they, 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 they did, no, no offense. They did drop off a little bit, but nothing to be that concerned about defensively. But offensively, you're in trouble. Number two, uh, it's Texas. It is. For me, it's Texas. They get 70-plus on um, Texas Tech. They're finding ways to score. Every single game, their offense has been good. I, I mean, honestly, their offense has been good. And even against Arkansas, they moved the ball. They really did. They moved the ball very well. The problem was when they moved the ball, they stalled towards the end. When they moved the ball, they were kind of pressed in the red zone. And they settled for field goals or they settled for um, going forward on fourth down. They had a lot of big plays. And then Casey Thompson comes in and he has a spectacle during the second half of the fourth quarter, gets two touchdowns, leads two drives into the red zone. Maybe it's a whole different game. They still put up 21 points against Arkansas. So 21 points versus 10 points. That's why I put AM at second at third place and not at second place. So unfortunately, that's the case. And 70 points, 50 points, 38 points against the other opponents. Against TCU, maybe they put up maybe 10 points. Maybe they put up 80 points. I don't know. Texas is a weird team right now because of I do believe Texas is not that good. And I do think that they are a little overhyped, but they are not the worst team in the state of Texas. And they honestly are probably the second or third best team in the um, Big 12. And I'm not saying that the Big 12 can beat up on Texas A&M, but Texas and this other team maybe could. Number one is Baylor. For me, it's Baylor. It, it has to be. It, it has to be Baylor right now because of the way the offensive production has been under new coordinator Jeff Grimes, the guy who saw the most success out of Zach Wilson in Provo last year at BYU. 
has immediately changed. They decided to go with Jerry Bohannon as the starting quarterback over Jacob Zemo, and it's paid off evidently. He is, I think, number two in the country right now in completion rating at 73% of his passes thrown, and he has yet to throw an interception. He has yet to cause a turnover. They're winning at all three, three phases. They were able to get, um, I believe it was, over, to, over 175 rushing yards against Iowa State's run defense, which is pretty dang good. Uh, they were able to build a lead. They had an immense lead going into halftime. And on top of that, they held Iowa State to less than 50% on third down efficiency. They are killing it defensively, stopping players on third down. And that's exactly what you wanted when you brought in Dave Aranda. Aranda was supposed to be brought in to fix the defense and bring in the right name offensively. He has done that. Offensively, Jeff Grimes, I do think, is a name to watch for in the head coaching circle, probably in about a year or so. But it's really interesting to see how he's brought this offense to be not just more of a passing attack, but really balanced overall. And Aranda, with a full offseason to build his defense, the one that he had at LSU into Waco, is now working. I believe the Bears could actually be a team to watch for in the New Year's Six Bowl games. I could see them actually playing for the Big 12 championship. They are a hot streak right now. Big game this weekend against Oklahoma State. If they beat Oklahoma State, there's a legitimate conversation to put them top 15 and ahead of Texas and probably even ahead of Oklahoma should Oklahoma find a way to play significantly bad once again. That's going to do it for this edition of Locked on Aggies. Thank you so much for making us your very first listen every single day. I'll be back tomorrow to break down everything you need to know about Mississippi State, Texas A&M, predictions, winners, losers, national predictions, all that and much, much more. We'll see you then. And remember... Give me all.